Hey, this is the second video of the day, and uh, I'm going to talk about quickly. Um, the Sixers will obviously win tonight against the Sacramento Kings, who are one of the uh, rebuilding back to where the Sixers were a few years ago franchises in basketball, so they will get the W. The Flyers will also get the W about uh, against the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Um, and... Uh, Nolan Patrick on Flyers News, they hope, is back by next week. Uh, we all do, obviously. Great young player. Um, provides an extra presence on the ice. And uh, he's just somebody that we all hope and uh, well wishes to and hope he's back as soon as possible. But uh, Joel will be playing tonight for the Sixers, which further solidifies them beating the Kings. Jared Bayless is still out until at least Saturday. Um, but both of our Philadelphia teams will win tonight. Um, moving on to uh, the bigger thing in the video is rankings of top three young quarterbacks. And by young, I like to say that in years in the league and not age because in my opinion, once you're good for one to three years, you're good, and you're not you're not just gonna suck after. You can argue one to two, I get that, but in my opinion, uh, it's one to three. Uh, you're not gonna suck like Derek Carr is not gonna all of a sudden start sucking. Russell Wilson's not all of a sudden gonna start sucking. Uh, um, guys like that. Um, now there are guys that solidify themselves earlier, like Wentz, or Prescott. And even a Jared Goff, in my opinion, and a Deshaun Watson. But uh, they're still young because they've only been in the league for Watson one year and uh, the other three their second year. Um, but anyway, getting to it, I rank the young quarterbacks as follows. Wentz is number one because, uh, I mean, he's favored to be the MVP this year as to this date. Uh Surprisingly, I rank Jared Goff as number two, actually, and we'll get into that by the numbers in a minute. Uh, and then Dak Prescott is a close third. Um, now, getting into it by the numbers, uh, last season, uh, Carson Wentz uh, was 379 for 607, which is a ridiculous amount of passes. Uh 62.4 completion percentage, which is really good for throwing 607 passes. Uh, he was 16 to 14 in terms of touchdown interception ratio, and his rating was a 79.3. Uh, going to this year, he's 176 for 291 so far, which is a 60.4 completion percentage. He has 2,226 yards, um, 23 touchdowns, and five interceptions, and a 104.1 passer rating, so he's number one because uh, in terms of, he's been consistent, and with eyesight, he was really good last year, but the Eagles overall franchise was not very good last year, as all of us Eagles fans know. We have wide receivers that have bricks for hands. Uh, so, I mean, this year... We are doing substantially better. We added guys that he expressed interest in wanting to add. And we added guys on our defense like a Jernigan, who's an underrated add, a Patrick Robinson, who's doing great. Uh, so that helps overall everybody in terms of grabbing momentum. But in terms of the offense, we added a LeGarrette Blount and now a Jay Ajay, which, and uh, of course, uh, Jeffrey and uh, Smith, which uh, really helps the overall offense and allows us to spread the field and confuse the defense more. Whereas last year we didn't have those caliber of players around a stud quarterback. Um, uh, comparing golf's numbers, who's the only one that didn't play a full season out of the three. Um, he only played seven games last year, went 112 for 205, which is a 54.6 completion percentage. Uh, he had five touchdowns and seven interceptions. Obviously, that's not that good. His 63.6 .6 rating and yards per game was 155.6. Forgot to say, Carson Wentz's his yards per game last year were 236.4. Um, 
so and then comparing that to this year, um, golf is 147 for 244 so far, 2,036 yards, 13 to touchdowns to four picks, 97.9 rating, and yards per game is 253.8. Uh, and his uh, completion percentage is 60.2. Um, he, I mean, I put him second, is obviously his first year wasn't that good, but we have to factor in he only played seven games and got thrown into a terrible situation to begin with. Todd Gurley had injury issues last year. He's fully healthy this year and is showing he's capable and uh, a really good NFL back. Um, they didn't have Watkins, the wide receivers they added this year. They did. They added a smaller name free agents. Their defense is consistently better, which helps with the momentum basis of having the offense stay in momentum uh, when there's three and outs from the defense. That's a big thing for the Birds and uh, Cowboys and among other teams. Um, but the reason I put him second is because look at the step he's made this year. He's been so good, and he's also taken a lot of deep shots like Carson Wentz, where uh, how Wentz has uh, the 2,226 or 262 yards this year, and he has 2,030, uh, whereas Dak only has in yardage um, 1,818. So. The uh, Cowboys don't take as many shots down the field and complete them as the Eagles and Rams do. So I put him second because he spreads the field more. And in games that Todd Gurley hasn't had the best games, like uh, Jared Goff consistently throws four, he throws four touches in the game multiple times this year. And uh, Dak hasn't consistently done that. Now, of course, part of it's because he has Zeke, who's one of the best running backs in the league. But um, golf has Gurley, who's one of the best running backs in the league statistically this year, too. And his passing numbers this year, uh, except for amounts of touchdowns, are above that of Dak Prescott. Um, and the reason Dak Prescott, I think, was so great last year also was because he had the best team out of the three. Cowboys, uh, the Elliott and Prescott came in at the same time. Um, they both had great rookie campaigns. The Cowboys defense was the best out of all three of those teams last year. Their offense was the best out of all three of those teams last year, no question. I mean, they have Des Bryant on their team, one of the best uh, receivers in the league. Um, so, obviously, that helps Dak Prescott. Um, so, the reason golf second is because of how big of a step he made and uh, really how big of a leader he is to that organization and... I always liked Jared Goff uh, coming out of college. A lot of people thought he wasn't going to be that good in the NFL. Well, now he's proven you all wrong. Um, the uh, Going into Dak stats last year, who had the best season out of all of them last year, was 311 for 459, 67.8 percentage, yards per game with 229.2, uh, 23 touchdowns of four interceptions, and a 104.9 rating, which is comparable to Wentz's this year, which is a 104.1. And then this year's stats for Dak Prescott is 163 of, over 259, which is a 62.9 percentage. He's thrown for eight. Uh, 18, 18 yards, uh, 16 touchdowns, four picks, a 97.9 rating, which is exactly that of Jared Goff. And yards per game is 227.2. So he uh, has been consistent and obviously is getting better uh, this year. He's building off of last year. But the reason I put him as third is because of Ezekiel Elliott, in part, he has the best running back out of all of them, and the and still arguably the best surrounding offense, but that can be argued 
but he clearly is the best running back. Everyone always talks about running back to quarterback combo and how much of a big deal that is. So going into Zeke's numbers, um, he has 191 carries, uh, 4.1 yards per carry on average, seven touchdowns, and one fumble. Uh, His yards per game are 97.9. He has 783 total yards. And then if we want to compare that to that of Jared Goff, to put him second, uh, Goff has 161 carries, 689 yards, 4.26 average, so more yards per carry on average, seven touchdowns and two fumbles, but his yards per game are 85.8, which is about 12 less than Ezekiel Elliott. And let's be honest, that's average. Typically, Ezekiel Elliott gets over 100 yards. Todd Gurley does sometimes, but not week in and week out. Um, And then, obviously, the Eagles, the reason Carson was so impressive is because we have a platoon of running backs. So, for them, I actually have to write down two names, being Blunt and Ajay, who we just got. And Blunt has 109 carries, 504 yards, 4.62 average, which is a great average, which is kind of expected with that guy. He's a bulk. Uh, and two touchdowns, zero interceptions, and yards per game is 56. Uh, Ajay has 550, uh, 542 yards, excuse me. His yards per game are 67.8. His average is 3.71, which I think will go up behind the Eagles' O-line. He has one touchdown and one fumble. So... The reason Dak Prescott is number three is because he's got the best uh, back behind him, which goes a long way in having the capabilities to be that great quarterback. Dak Prescott can easily come up the list if Ezekiel Elliott, depending on Ezekiel's suspension, and we can see how much he carries the team when the running back game isn't there, like he did last week when Zeke didn't do that great. Uh, But that's one week. Uh, Let's see what he does uh, in the coming weeks if Ezekiel Elliott isn't in the game. Um, But uh, the Eagles, of course, have a bye week this week. Um, uh, But, uh, and then... Of course, if Deshaun Watson didn't get injured, he would be thrown into that young quarterback conversation, and that would move guys around. But uh, my top three, again, are Carson Wentz, Jared Goff, and then Dak Prescott. Um, Everyone have a great day. Um, Enjoy your Thursday. Uh, Don't do anything too stupid. Uh, Have a good one, everybody.